okay, I wanted to illustrate what individual neurons can do with the formulation that we've developed uh, so far. And, and so what we're going to do is take on a couple of very simple problems, and we're going to solve them by hand. And hopefully this will give you some intuition as to what these things are capable of. So the, the first problem uh, looks like this. this. So these are the, the data samples that we would hand to a, uh, a training problem. Right? I just transferred the function that we are wanting to learn down, down here. So we still have our two inputs, our x0 and our x1. Y is our desired output. So that first row is one uh, example where, where a zero and a zero input. We, we want to uh, output zero, zero and one as input. We want to output one or something very close to one. Here's our network architecture. We have those two inputs, x0 and x1. And then there's also a, a bias term. And here is the function that we're computing, at least the, the weighted sum that we're computing is all written out right here. So we have the x1 multiplied by its parameter, x0 multiplied by uh, its parameter, and then we have our bias term right here. And then as we talked about before, for the nonlinearity, this f here, we're going to use uh, our sigmoid function. And so the, the challenge that's before us is what should these Ws be? So we've got three different things to choose. What should they be in order for us to uh, approximate our desired output? So let's do just a little bit of preliminary work. Let me put it off to the, the side here um, so that we don't have to do this on the fly. Uh, a net input of zero translates into a 0.5 output. We saw that on our figure. An input of one, a net input of one translates into a 73.731 output. Two is uh, 0.88. Three is uh, 0.95. And you'll see as we get close, as we get higher and higher, we start to approximate one. So by the time we hit 0.5, we're at 0.99 and and at six, we're really 0.999, somewhere in that vicinity. And, and if we go in the opposite direction, then we, we start to approach uh, zero. So and an f of negative one is, uh, is just one minus this term right here. So let's go ahead and, and just pick some w's just to see what happens. So a reasonable first observation is that in some sense this function is symmetric it doesn't really matter which column here we assign to be x1 or x0 the outputs are still going to be the same uh, so that probably suggests in this case that the w's really the the w's here really ought to be the uh the same as one another so let's go ahead and pick a one and a one as uh as uh, the weights there. And just because we're still experimenting, let's go ahead and put a zero at this location. So let's, let's go about computing what N zero is now for each of those four cases. So for the, that very first row, the X's are both zeros. So those two terms are, are zero. W two is zero as well. So our net input is zero. In the case of the second row, this is still uh, zero here, but we have a, a one here, and this term is, is also zero. Uh, so we have a net input of one. Again, it's a symmetric function, so a net input of one for the third row. And for the, the last row, we have a one here and a one here. So one times one plus one times one gives us a net input of two. And then to compute what what our actual output is. So at this stage, all we have to do is look up uh, from this table here. So this gives us a 0.5. Uh, this is a 0.731. This is 0.731. And this is 0.88. So this is what our network is actually outputting. And this is what we wanted. If we look at those bottom three rows, if we squint a little bit, we're, we're doing OK. 0.88 is something approximating one. 0.731, uh, you could 
kind of say it, it, it's getting close to, to one. Um, but this row in particular is problematic. We hit, we're outputting 0.5 and we really want to output a, a zero. So the question is, what do we change about our choice of parameters in order to do better? So one possibility, I'll go ahead and draw this in as, as another color, is to set this W2, say, to negative one. And under those conditions, our N0 for, uh, for the first row is negative one. For the next row is zero. So we have zero times, uh, sorry, one times zero plus one times one plus uh, negative one, that gives us a zero. We also have a zero for the third row and the fourth row we have a, uh, a one. Under these conditions, our corresponding X looks like this. So this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.73. And this is, sorry, 0 0.731, point something on the order of 0.269. So in, in some sense, if we look at just that very first row, we've, we've done a bit better. We, instead of 0.5, we're now outputting 0.269. And in the last row, we're, we haven't changed a whole lot. We've gone to 0.731 instead of the 0.88. Um, however, the middle two rows, we're outputting 0.5 when we, before we were something much closer to one. But hopefully we've learned uh, something here. So, so the question is, how do we, how do we make changes to this particular uh, network in order to do better? So let's, let's make some other choices. We clearly, in these two cases, we need to have some larger positive values. We still need to make sure that we have a net input that's negative uh, in this case. So let's, let's go about trying to uh, tackle that. So what happens if we were to say, double the value of these two W's here? And unfortunately now I'm running a little bit out of space, but we'll just work in this, these two columns here. So that net input in this particular case is two times zero minus one. So net input is one here. Uh, the next one is, zero times two plus one times two minus one. So that gives us a positive one here, likewise a positive one here, and here we have a three. So that gives us an uh, output of 0.269. So we, we kept it the same as, as before, which was nice. And, uh, and we have 0.731 here, 0.731. Three, one here and 0.95 right here. So in fact, that last row has gotten better. We kept the first row the same. And what's nice is now we've, we've done much better in those middle two rows. Okay, so we, we have a, a very reasonable pattern that we've uh, established here. And really to start to make these values approach either zero or one appropriately, what we really need to do is to increase the magnitude of uh, these parameters here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to make these much larger. Let's say make these 10 instead of two, and let's make this negative five here. So when we do that, that very first row where we, the X's are both zero, that just leaves us with our bias term here for our net input. However, for the next two rows, we have zero times 10 plus one times 10 minus five, which gives us a five. And for the very last row, we have uh, one times 10 plus one times 10 minus five, which gives us 15. The negative five, this is something on the order of 0 0.01. The positive five is 0 0.99, 99 and a net input of 15 really gives us a, a whole bunch of, of nines there. So we're really close to ones for those three cases, and we're really close to zero in, in this particular case. 
And at, at this stage, we might call this uh, sufficiently good. If we continue to push the parameter magnitudes up a bit more, we can make these errors even smaller, but there isn't a whole lot more progress to be made here. All right, so that gives you a, a sense of how we can solve one particular binary uh, problem with, uh, with, with a single neural element. And next we'll take on a different one.